out to the side, front of the body, down to the front of the thighs, right back up, back out, down. That's one rep. Hey man, Gary Walker here with liveanabolic.com and welcome back for another video. All right, in this video, I'm gonna take you through the best workout routine at home and this is specifically for men over 40, all right? Here's the thing, if you've seen some of my videos on this type of training before, this one's gonna be different. We're gonna break it up a little bit because at the end of the day, there's several different things you can do at home. This is only gonna require four training sessions per week. Each of these workouts are gonna be between 30, 45 minutes, quick, efficient, be intense, get in, get out, get all the benefits and all the results from these workouts, all right? But first, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel. Also, make sure you click on that bell icon. That way you get notified every time we upload a new video. All right, with that out of the way, here's how I'm gonna structure this before we get into the actual exercises. Again, I mentioned four days per week. You're gonna be doing body day and upper body day, all right? And then you're gonna take a day off, you're gonna do another lower, another upper. So two upper body workouts, two lower body workouts. It's gonna be the same workout because I'm putting exercises into this program that are gonna give you tremendous benefits and your bigger bang for your buck movements. All right, so again, the goal with these three sets, 10 to 12 reps each. 10 to 12 reps, fill it out, go as heavy as you can. I know you're working out at home, so you may not have extremely heavy dumbbells, so if that's the case, that's okay. But let's up the rep ranges from 10 to 12 to 12 to 15, just to push yourself a little bit more and challenge yourself. And if you haven't seen any of my videos on Tricon training, then that's another technique you can implement if you have really light dumbbells. You can still get really good results with those light dumbbells. All right, so check out some of my Tricon training videos if you wanna go that route. All right, now the rest of the structure. You got two upper body, two lower body. So that's gonna give you three off days per week. And Monday, Tuesday, you're working out, taking Wednesday off, work out again Thursday, Friday, and then you have the weekends off, Saturday and Sunday. All right, now that you have the actual setup, let's get started with the exercises. All right, so now again, workout A, lower body, workout B, upper body. So we're starting with workout A. And the first exercise I'm choosing is an alternating reverse lunge. Here's the thing about that. I'm starting with this to get a little bit of movement going in your hips and knees. So you may want to do a warm up set or two here first, even if you have to warm up doing some body weight squats. But you want to get a little blood going, a little synovial fluid in your knees. Once you get loose and feel good, you're gonna start with the alternating reverse lunges. All right, I'm gonna demonstrate these. Here's the thing, you may have to bear with me. My legs are super sore from a brutal leg workout I just did, all right? But we're gonna get through this. All right, here's what we're gonna do. Alternate, meaning one side, then the other, all right? We're gonna start, come down, nice and low, back to the top. Same thing with the other side. All right, let me just go through these. Let you watch me do three or four with each side. Again, if you need dumbbells, grab dumbbells, hold them to your side. If you have a kettlebell or something, you wanna hold the kettlebell here, then you can do that as well. Completely up to you. All right, so basically that's the first exercise. Second exercise, all about the hamstring. So we're gonna go grab some dumbbells. And this is gonna be a dumbbell RDL. Here's the thing when you're doing RDLs. Basically, don't just bend over at the waist. You want to do what's called a hip hinge. You want to get your, on the hip hinge, you're basically getting your glutes back as far as you can, and then allow the dumbbells to kind of ride down your legs. Here, nice big stretch. You should definitely feel these in your hamstrings. Right back to the top. Back to the top. Let's do a couple more. Yeah, with, your, with, with you focusing on sitting back, that's really going to stretch your hamstrings and it's also going to take tension off your lower back because you wanna feel this more 
in the back of your legs, even your glutes, more there than the low back. If you're feeling these in the low back, one of two things usually happens. One, you're bending and not hip hinging, all right? Two, you're going too deep. You'll notice with that hip hinge, this is as far down as I can go, as far down as I need to go. That doesn't mean I'm just not a flexible person. I can come all the way down if I want to, but this movement is but low back, all right? So again, just keep it kind of right here, feel the good stretch, and then contract yourself back to the top. All right, that's the second exercise that we're doing. Now let's take a dumbbell and go into a goblet squat. Dumbbell goblet squats. Again, whether you have dumbbells, whether you have a kettlebell, either works well. All you wanna do, wider stance when you're doing these and drop right down into your squat position right here. All right, I actually like to sit here the very first rep to open up my hips a little bit and then drive back to the top. Straight down, straight up. One thing you really wanna focus on, keep the dumbbell as close to your body as possible. Don't allow it to come forward or you don't wanna to lean too far forward. Straight up right as much as you can, dumbbell right up against your chest. All right, so now, now that you've done the goblet squat, we're gonna do another glute exercise. This is gonna be a glute bridge, all right? So for the glute bridge, basically, what you're gonna do, I'm gonna show you an immediate and then more of an advanced here in a minute. All right, so this one, let's say intermediate, even beginner can do these. You want your heels to be close to your glutes, core tight, and I like to tuck my shoulders in, core tight, and then you're just gonna lift here, push those heels into the ground, and really focus on squeezing the glutes. Nice and slow on the way down, contract on the way up. And I like to hold each one of these for three seconds. Let me show you a couple of these. Down, boom, one, two, three, just like that. Down, one, two, three. Some nice little holds. All right, now this is fairly easy. Uh, it's tougher, but if you're more advanced and you're not really feeling much from these, it's okay to do the unilateral, meaning one leg at a time. So basically, you're gonna push off with one, just like this. The other one's just here, adding resistance. So down there, one, two, three, same concept, and you're just gonna alternate sides. Every time you push, one, two, three, down, one, two, three. All right, it actually targets your glutes very well. All right, so now we're actually gonna go down the leg and hit our calves. So one of my favorite at-home calf exercises is a dumbbell unilateral calf raise. Use a wall or something for balance. And again, three seconds here, just like you do your glute work. Bring it down, thousand one, thousand two, thousand three. Bring it down, that's one, two, three. All right. And you're gonna alternate sides. But the one thing I was trying to tell you that you can do, if you have about a two inch block, a weight plate, something like that, then go ahead and do these same movements. But for instance, here, it's gonna allow for a deeper, deeper stretch, you'll notice. And then a really good contraction at the top. Good deep stretch. That was one, two, three, good contraction. It's the stretch that you're really getting a benefit from. Just like that. So that's the difference when you add a weight plate or a block, anything like that, all right? But now that we've done our legs, again, you will have done three sets of each of these. All right, the last one we're gonna do, we're gonna work the abs and obliques. For this exercise, we're gonna be doing the Russian twist. Here's the thing with the Russian twist. You can do them with extra resistance. You can grab a dumbbell and do these. Kettlebell, medicine ball, anything like that. All right, and there's also beginner, and intermediate, and advanced. Beginner here, keep your heels on the ground, lean back, which is going to activate the abs, and then side to side, 
just like that. This is gonna help work your abs and the transverse movement is gonna help work your obliques. Just like that. All right. Intermediate, still no weight. Lift your heels off the ground, just like this, side to side. Just like that, all right? That's more of the intermediate. The advanced is you're gonna do that with your heels up, but you're going to load up the resistance as much as you need to get a really good workout and as much as you can control utilizing good form. All right, so basically, again, this is your entire workout. Workout a lower body. You will be doing this twice a week. So what I'm gonna challenge you to do, try to be better the second time you do this than you did the first time. The next week you do this, try to be better next week than you were this week. So focus on making progress, all right? Progress with each of these lifts. If you started out doing body weight something, try adding five or 10 pounds the next workout. If you started out with 20 pounds, try doing 25 pounds. 25 is too heavy, try adding one or two more reps. All right, just make sure you're making some type of progress and improvement. All right, now we're gonna get into workout B, which is the upper body workout. All right, workout B is the upper body again. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna work something for every body part pretty much. So we're gonna start out with the chest. All right, same setup here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start with one that I really like at home, an exercise I like. We're gonna start on the floor. This is gonna be a floor press. One thing to keep in mind, if you don't have a bench, I'm gonna show you how to do everything on the floor. If you do have an adjustable bench, try to do these exercises on the bench. If you want a cheap alternative to an adjustable bench, if you don't have one, then you can do these on an exercise ball like this, all right? So you can do a chest press on an exercise ball. All right, so you can do your bench press. You can do several of these exercises. I'm gonna show you how to do a pullover in a minute. You can get a really good range of motion if you have one of these balls. Thing about these that I like a lot, very inexpensive. This dude was like nine bucks, all right? Ordered on Amazon, you get it in a couple days and you've got that as a bench. But you don't necessarily have to have one. So I'm gonna show you the floor press. Here's what we're doing though. This is not just gonna be a standard floor press. So basically floor press is just lying down doing a bench press without a bench. This is gonna be a fly, dumbbell fly to squeeze press. Squeeze press means you're getting the dumbbells together, holding them there, and you're gonna do your pressing with this motion, all right? But right after you do a fly, and here's what this is gonna look like. So anytime you're working your chest, you wanna make sure that you are tucking those shoulders in, depressing the shoulders, keeping them safe. Nice, good stretch here. That's the fly. Bring these in together, hold them, squeeze them together. Down, press. That's one rep. So you would come out, together, press. Boom, all right, two reps. Just like that. You should really feel these hitting your chest. This is one of my favorite exercises. Do one more. And again, whatever type of dumbbells you have. If you have hexagon dumbbells, round dumbbells or something like that, you wanna squeeze them together as hard as you can because that's also gonna activate your pecs even more. So you'll notice the type I have, it's kind of hard to get a really good squeeze. They've gotta be aligned perfectly, but still doable. The main thing, full stretch of the chest on the fly, bring those together, squeeze them as hard as you possibly can. All the way down, you're still squeezing, all the way up, you're still squeezing. All right, that's gonna create a huge contraction in your pecs. All right, so that's gonna be the first exercise from there. We're going straight into a dumbbell back row. All right, dumbbell back row, one thing when you're doing back, lead with the elbows. That's the key. It's more elbows, drive those elbows back. So hip hinge, like we discussed with the lower body workout. So get your glutes back, come down here. Once you're in this position, I like to get those shoulder blades back and then drive, again, leading with the elbows. 
nice, slow, and under control when you're doing these. And what I mean by that is you don't wanna just go through and use momentum like that. Nice and slow on the stretch. Hold the contraction. Slow on the stretch. Hold the contraction. All right, couple more here. And this will definitely work your lats. You're gonna feel this. All right. So that's the second exercise. So again, we've gone chest, we've gone back. Same similar setup to the lower body that we did. Three sets. So you wanna shoot for three sets of these. Three sets, 10 to 12 reps. Once you've done your back, one of my favorite shoulder exercises, all right? Here's the thing. I really love shoulder presses. So dumbbell shoulder presses, good compound movement. However, I really wanted you to get something that's gonna really give you that good burn, a lot of lactic, lactic acid in the shoulders, give you a really good shoulder pump. So we're gonna be going with a side lateral to front raise. So if you haven't done this, this is basically two movements with each rep that you do, all right? So side lateral, out to the side, front of the body, down to the front of the thighs, right back up, back out, down. That's one rep, that's one rep. Here, here, just like this. One thing you really wanna focus on, keep the control with these. All right, this is gonna give you a really good burn in the shoulders when you do these. Keynote, it's not gonna take a lot of weight. So don't think you need 30s, 40s to do this. I've got guys doing this with five pounds and getting great results, all right? You're still gonna burn the crap out of those shoulders. So basically that's your next exercise that we're gonna be doing for the shoulders. Again, when you're doing lateral raises, you're working the medial delts, so the sides of your shoulders. Front raises that we're doing are gonna really be targeting the anterior delts, so the front. So another big reason I like doing these, okay? But after you've done these, we're gonna go into one more chest exercise. And here's the thing, you're pre-exhausting your shoulders. Typically, I like to do all my chest work, then get into my shoulder work. But with this, we're not really overloading the weight. We're not going super heavy, six to eight reps, five reps, anything like that. We're keeping the rep ranges 10 to 12. So that means the weights are naturally gonna be slightly lighter. So what we're trying to do is really pre-exhaust the front of the shoulders. So the next chest exercise we're gonna do, you can grab a chair, sofa, wherever you're working out, whatever you have access to, but it's just a feet elevated push-up. So the goal here, when we did the first chest exercise, fly to squeeze press, lot of middle pec, middle pec, good meaty part of the muscle, all right? But you still wanna shape that upper part of the chest. This is one of the best ways to do it with a push-up version. Don't need any weight at all. And we're just going to set up just like this. Nice full stretch and contract that chest. Basically getting those elbows pointed towards one another. Right here, squeeze. So let's do three more quick. Three, there you go. All right, so that's gonna help target that upper chest. You're still getting a stretch that's gonna work the overall pecs, all right, the overall chest, but it's gonna help emphasize a little bit more the upper. All right, so now we're gonna close out with two last exercises. Can't neglect the arms, man, all right? Here's the thing. Obviously, a lot of these exercises work the triceps, work the biceps, but it's as a secondary movement. So for here, we're gonna target each one individually. So let's go with dumbbell overhead tricep extensions. You can do two dumbbells at a time like this. I'll show you the side view. Nice, good stretch. Nice, good contraction, all right? Nice stretch, really hold that stretch. Hold the contraction. Nice, slow, and under control. So I really like this movement. Do a couple more here. There, let's go one more. Nice, good stretch. Nice contraction. So 
dumbbell overhead tricep extension. Now, gotta work those biceps, man, all right? What we're also gonna do is work the forearms with this exercise. These are the Zotman curls. So if you've done a Zotman curl, then you know these work well. If you haven't, then you're in luck. Add them to your routine, you're gonna get great benefits. Basically, supinated meaning palms away from your body. Supinated is palms away. You're gonna start this way, chest out, shoulders back anytime you're working your biceps and focus on squeezing the biceps here. Here's where the Zotman uh, curl kicks in. Now you're rotating these. This is pronation. Palms are down and bring them down nice and slow. Rotate here, supination, contract. Just like that. I like these because we're working the biceps and we're also working those forearms. So one exercise to hit both. Show you a couple more. You'll see the cadence I'm using, nice and slow. No cheating, not allowing these to just drop at the bottom. That's crucial when you're doing all these exercises. You wanna control the negative, the downward portion, just as much as you're controlling the upward movement, the concentric contraction, all right? All right, but that's your bicep exercise you're gonna be doing. And now we've hit it all, all right? We've hit pretty much everything and it doesn't take a lot of time. If you wanna rest 60 seconds, in between doing these, start out with 60 seconds. If you're struggling, not in great shape, you're not quite conditioned to do that yet, you need 90 seconds, up to two minutes to rest. It's okay to get that type of rest period as well. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the key is push yourself, challenge yourself, and then look for improvements from week to week. But man, I hope you like this video. If you have any questions at all about anything, then comment below and let me know. Other than that, that's all that I got. Get busy, get after it. God bless.